Ken Whiting with Paddle TV, and in this video, we are comparing two very different but very similar kayaks. Now, both these kayaks beside me are entry level recreational inflatable kayaks, but the Intex Challenger K1 is 170 US dollars, and that comes with a paddle. The Advanced Elements Advanced Frame Kayak is $490. Now, that's still a great deal for an inflatable kayak, but it's three times as much as this kayak. So the question is, what's the difference between these two kayaks? And what's the right kayak for you? Let's start by looking at the Intex Challenger K1. Let's look at what you get for 170 US dollars, not including the paddle. There's a paddle that comes with this as well. But anyway, let's start by talking about durability because for me, that was my biggest concern. I was like 170 bucks for an inflatable kayak. Well, is this thing going to just rip and end up in some landfill within a week or two? Well, it's made from a waterproof vinyl, which is by nature fairly durable. But my feeling is having looked at this kayak and having given it a quick little test that if you treated this thing very, very well, if you made sure not to drag it on rocks, to avoid hitting any type of rocks on the water. You just took really good care of it. This thing could last quite a long time, but if you didn't, it could really end up in the garbage very quickly too. You have to take care of this thing. One thing to note also about durability is to keep the cost down. This kayak is made of two compartments. You blow up two different compartments and that's it. So if you do on the water have a failure, you get a tear, a rip, a hole of some kind, well, you've just lost pretty much 50% of your kayak. The kayak is not going to be paddleable. So you can't have the confidence with this kayak to go on a longer paddling trip because if something does go wrong, you're basically you're in trouble. You have to swim to shore with it and you have to walk home. That's a real limitation with this kayak. Now, performance. This kayak can only be pumped up to about one or two PSI. That's very different from a high-end inflatable kayak, which uses something called drop stitch construction. Those can be pumped up between 10 and 15 PSI. Now, being able to pump something up harder dramatically improves its performance. It makes it perform more like a hard shell kayak. This one, it's soft and it's always going to be soft and that's going to dramatically impact its performance. But if you're getting this kayak, you're probably not getting a kayak for races or for high performance. You just want something to get on the water. And to that end, it does the job just fine. You know, there's not too many other features here to look at. Uh, the, on the bottom, it's, uh, it's got an inflatable floor, of course. It has this removable skeg and it's got a cargo net on the top, which one design flaw of this kayak is that these nubs here are in the wrong place. When you take a paddle stroke, you can knock your knuckles on there a little bit. So that's a small design flaw with this one. But otherwise, let's take a look at, at the Advanced Frame Kayak by Advanced Elements, which is almost $500, three times the price of this thing, and see what are you paying for when it's three times as much. So what makes the advanced frame kayak three times the price of this? And that's not even considering that you got a paddle with this kayak. Well, there's a few things. Let's start with the bow, the bow of this kayak. The bow actually has a bit of a frame in it. And what that does is it gives it some structure. So it, like a real hard shell kayak, it cuts through the water versus this kayak, which really doesn't have any structure with the bow at all. Big upgrade for performance. Now, I think the biggest upgrade for this with this kayak is the skin. This kayak is also has vinyl bladders on the inside, but it's wrapped with this durable, abrasion resistant skin so that if you rub up against rocks, if you end up dragging it for a little bit, I wouldn't recommend dragging it. It's gonna hold up to the abuse a lot better. You've got this wonderful extra 
heavy duty layer of protection over your kayak. Yes, it makes it a little bit heavier, but in my mind, it's a, that's well worth the trade-off. Now next, this kayak has seven different compartments or bladders. There's actually three of those compartments are substantial compartments. The other four are smaller ones that don't make much difference, but even with three compartments, if one of those compartments were to fail, you got some, for some reason through this, this uh, skin, you got a tear or a puncture or something and you lost air, well, you still have all those other compartments. So you can limp your way back to shore. You're, so you can have more confidence with this kayak going further from shore. The other thing this kayak has is an upgrade option. Now the floor in this particular version, the entry level version, is very similar to the floor in the other version, but you can upgrade it to a framed floor or a drop stitch construction floor, which dramatically improves the rigidity of this whole kayak and makes a big improvement to the kayak's performance. So, you know, that's quite a few upgrades. Otherwise, these two kayaks are very similar in nature. They're designed for recreational paddling on calm conditions, and they're both inflatable, so they're easy to transport. You don't need roof racks, you don't need a trailer. They're easy to get around, and they're easy to stow if you don't have room at home to store a full-size kayak. So. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between these two kayaks, but those are some pretty significant differences as well. So what kayak is right for you? Well, at 170 US dollars, this thing is really a tremendous deal. I would say that this kayak, the Intex Challenger K1, is a great kayak for people who really wanna test the water, dip their toe, into kayaking, see if it's for them. Maybe they only expect to get on the water once or twice a summer. They can't, uh, they don't have roof racks, don't wanna move around kayaks, store kayaks, go through that hassle, then this is a great option. The downside of this kayak is durability for one. And number two is that if you start getting into kayaking, you enjoy, enjoy your experience out there, and you're like, I'm gonna do this a bit more often, maybe even just once a week or, or so, you are quickly, quickly, quickly going to outgrow this kayak, and you're gonna to wanna to move into something different. The Advanced Frame Kayak by Advanced Elements. Now, at $500, this is still an entry-level kayak. This is about as cheap an inflatable kayak as you're gonna get aside from this one. Most inflatables, you expect to pay between 500 to 1500 I actually just recently tested a $2,200 um, inflatable kayak. So this is a, an entry level inflatable kayak, but what it what allows someone to do is it's A, it's gonna last longer in all likelihood, assuming it's treated well, and B, you can upgrade it. You can put a better floor in this kayak so that you can grow more with it. The, the nice structured bow too makes it for a better paddling performance. So this is the kind of kayak that uh, you can grow a lot more with over this kayak. So it really depends on what you're looking for. They're both solid kayaks for the right type of user. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's been helpful in making the choice and identifying the differences between two entry-level inflatable kayaks. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and check out the Paddle TV channel because we got lots more gear reviews, tips, anything paddling, we have it there. Check it out, leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see and I'll see you next time for Something Paddling.